what would you call the interactions between Jen Psaki and Peter Ducey at oh, the White House man. press briefings? Um, uh, soap opera like uh, yes. drama adversarial. Feud. Another few, just like yeah. me and John Iderola. Um, <laughs> and and here they have this these interactions every single day. Ducey's a clown. Now he's um, pushing what I think right wingers are going to push for a, a while in the wake of this Ukraine crisis as oil prices are being driven up, which mm -hmm. is, OK, now it's time to ramp up dr domestic drilling and try to throw a wrench into any piecemeal or small tweaks that the Biden administration was considering when it comes to climate change. Uh, here is this interaction between Ducey and Saki. There's this talk about a possible forecast for financial pain, particularly at the gas pump yeah. for Americans. Um, the president said today the notion that this is going to last for a long time is highly unlikely. Would he try to ensure that by lifting some of the restrictions that he's put in place on the energy industry or rethinking some projects like the Keystone Pipeline? Well, first of all, the Keystone Pipeline is not flowing, so I'm not sure how that would solve anything. There's also plenty of oil leases that are not being tapped into by oil companies, so you should talk to them about that and why. Uh, but what the president's talking about is we certainly understand, and he said this today, right? May have been in response to your question. I don't remember. But um, if there's an invasion of another country by a big country, there's going to be impacts on the markets, right? And we certainly anticipated that, and we anticipate that as it relates to the global oil market as well. So that's why the president for weeks now has been engaging with a range of big global suppliers, some in the Middle East, others to see what we can do to ensure there's supply out there in the market to reduce the impact on the American people. I mean, what's your response to that? Because I'm, I'm frustrated even by her framing there. Um, yeah. the, the way that you should pivot is this is why we need to get off of our dependence on oil <laughs> because uh, one, it is damaging our climate to such a degree. It's a existential threat to the human population. And two, when we have this dependence and we have made these relationships like with Saudi Arabia, this dirty relationship that the United States always has to kind of skirt around in terms of its hypocrisy. And then they go and try to, uh, develop a relationship with Russia as well. Um, no, that's untenable. And, and we have to move towards a solution as opposed to like Jen Psaki saying to him, oh, why don't you talk to the oil companies about their own drilling in the United States? That's silly. Right. Yeah. And, and so maybe because she was in that particular situation, didn't know where he was going to go with it. But there's so many different options. Again, it, it starts to shine a light on why there's so many defenses of so many bad people. And it's outside of just, you know, the white nationalism or the love for Putin invading another country. And oh, he's a strong man, white guy, which that probably starts and ends for Donald Trump because that's his thought process. But folks who've been paid by energy companies and continue to have to represent them have been lobbied by them. We, and we brought up Joe Manchin a minute ago. He's definitely one of them. So this crosses party lines. The thought is you have to continually and no matter what the situation is, protect those interests. So yes, when you when you support the Saudis when they do horrific things, or when you support these guys uh, in this, or when European countries have to depend on the oil that comes from all this, or just pointing out to Americans, hey, gas prices are gonna go up, it all goes back to making sure that we feel we have to depend on that because that's the only route. Now, as you said, the easy way to go, or the most obvious in my mind way to go is, well, why don't we start developing ways to do this at home that don't right. depend on these types of folks. So we don't have to feel like even some presidents or some uh, some officials feel that they're under the thumb of these types of people, <laughs> these leaders of other countries. So I thought we were America. I always point this out. We're the most powerful. We have the best military in the world. We got the best people, the best minds. We do things before anyone else does them, except for develop new forms of energy so we don't have to deal with people like this anymore or cut off their supply line or the reasons why they have so much power and money. Why don't yeah. we? And it's a way to sell that agenda, too. I mean, even in the short term, if you have to make deals about oil, I mean, I understand we can't tomorrow flip a switch and be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're off oil tomorrow. Right. But even if you do have to make those deals, you can still take an opportunity to reframe the question and sell the, ne the necessity to get off of climate change, not just to help the planet because 
liberal hippy dippies, but because <laughs> there is an actual foreign policy reason for it from the perspective of Democrats like Saki and Biden. Yeah. And by the way, I've said this over and over and over again. I love my 1984 gas powered sports car that I still am working on that smells like the, the inside of a garage. That's just me. That's that's my attachment to old school cars. That's one of those hobbies of mine. Uh, but this whole thing about preserving the planet, making sure that we have to deal with these types of things. I, I'm willing to give it up. It's weird how that works. It's, it's just a hobby. It's a thing you have to give up because you care about your entire world around you instead of just continuing to think that we have to go down this same line. Uh, again, it's, it's for the money. It's not really for the stances or any of the principles that they say they would have in that. And bringing everything production back to America. Look, I know you're, you're, you know, you're on the East Coast, but I'm sure it's the same way uh, there. But the way that I see Teslas rolling around the streets here as many of you see that as you see of Priuses, people will buy these things. It's not like they don't want them and they can still have this whole uh, air of superiority or look, I have this expensive car. I'm a Los Angeles producer. All these types <laughs> of things happen. You can still transition and still make it happen a certain way. So it's not like the, it, there's no way that the consumers are not going to respond well to this is my point, even if it's someone like Elon Musk. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I I've never sat in a Tesla. I really never have, but I've seen them and they're pretty. But then I feel dirty about it because <laughs> of Elon Musk. I look at them like those those are pretty, but they're not amazing enough to have to deal with uh, with, how, with propping this guy up further. Because I, I did sit in one as well. I have a friend who had one. Uh, one of my kids. No, I haven't. I've never been in one. Yeah, I've never like, been in one. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's it's not life changing. The way okay. that they would force you to believe it's not a spaceship it's not a spaceship <laughs> uh, all right well jr yeah. thank you so much uh for coming on today please everybody check out the watch list on tyt network jr is you know one of the old school four original employees of tyt mm. that's right T uh jr that's I, true i was either four or five because i was here dave was gone but he came back and i know who this guy was so four to five four point five we'll go with huh? So yeah, Jared has been doing this for a long time. It's it's overdue that you have your own show. I uh, really appreciate you coming on today and hopefully I can see you in person at some point. Absolutely, uh, man. Right. Yeah, hope gotta, to come out to come LA. To, come to SoFi. We'll we'll catch a Rams Giants game. <laughs> oh god, that would not end well for me. <laughs> oh, I forgot you're a Rams <laughs> fan. Congratulations from like <laughs> St. Louis and back in the day. That's and you had the Dodgers win, which is like the, the past the past like the past three years. or four years for you have been amazing. Lakers in 20, Dodgers after that, Rams after that. Come on, man. Come I'm, on, um, man. I'm like slightly salty towards <laughs> you now. Um, but Didn't anyway, I uh, appreciate it so much. Uh, later, JR, and everybody Thank check you. out the watch list. Thank you, Emma. Good to see you.